Welcome to a Road Less Traveled podcast. I'm your host, Hillary Heron. Today we have with us Bree Gentry. Bree, can you give us your title and really what that means? Yeah, I feel like that's a loaded question, <laughs> but let's start. Um, first of all, I'm a salon owner here in Fresno, California, technically Clovis, of 17 years and have just gone through a major career shift for myself and um, that has changed the identity of the salon a bit. So in the last mm, six months, I have taken on a coaching role in the female space, which I love leading female entrepreneurs, as you know, being (laughs) one of my clients of all these years. And um, I just felt this call over my life that I was to shift gears just a bit and continue to do what I love, but at a different capacity. So I am a growth development coach for female entrepreneurs and um, brought in a partner to my salon in the last literally two weeks. That's amazing. <laughs> so it's awesome. Yeah. And is that going well? It has been. Yeah. yeah. All 13 days of it has been <laughs> awesome. Thanks for asking. <laughs> well, I mean, the first couple of weeks is usually the transition. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah. You're like getting used to each other's flow. Totally. Intimidating for sure. Just to decide to share power. And that has mm-hmm. been the hardest part of it all. But that's a mindset thing. Mm-hmm. And, um, Every day I'm learning and I'm growing. And so is she. So that's awesome, too, to get to be a part of her journey. That's amazing. Yeah. And part of that sharing power, I've I've not only, you know, in the hair chair, safe combos, but also follow like the social media journey. And and something that you talk about a lot is that as as a woman and as a leader, as a as a natural leader, you end up in this like position of control Mm -hmm. and and super strong. And then having to share that with anybody, even your partner, can be a struggle. Oh, yeah. Whether it's your romantic partner, business partner, whatever. Yeah. How has this transition kind of helped you along that road? Um, You know, the truth is I have no problem delegating to anyone. My husband always says- not sharing power, though. (laughs) No, this is true. (laughs) This is true. Mark always says you should be a general contractor because I have no problem delegating and doing those things. And then realizing that I'm not the one that gets to make those calls anymore solely by myself Mm -hmm. and allowing someone else to have that say, it is a very weird place to be. But I can tell you, it has brought me such a peace that I cannot explain. Mm -hmm. And um, I had an experience actually with somebody this last week, a co-trainer of mine in this class that we take down in Dana Point. And he said, Brie, there's something about like your demeanor, like, it just has a softness about it. And it's interesting because I feel that also. Mm-hmm. I felt like for so many years I carried this weight and it created this heaviness over me. I'm not even lying when I tell you, I'm gonna be real with you. Mm-hmm. I went in and had like a consultation to get a facelift because I've looked at my photos from like contrasting four years. I'm like, I have aged so much. When did that happen? And the reality is, is chaos and just like busy and All the things of life can do that to you. Mm -hmm. And I really felt like it was physically weighing me down, altering the way that I looked even. And right now what I'm feeling is this lightness and kind of brightness, if you will, and this peace. And I was telling my co-trainer, his name's David. I said, David, it's so weird. I feel like I'm walking through a mall and it's empty. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You get this eerie feeling when you're in this massive building and you're this big and there's just like you have access to everything. Any piece of clothing I want, any shoe that I want, they have my size. There's no line, no hesitation to buy it. And the truth is I want none of it. Mm -hmm. I just want people. Like the stillness. Yes. It's a very weird place to be. And you know, in ownership of businesses for so long, that that leadership role creates this like space of isolation almost. Mm -hmm. There, There can be a loneliness that exists with that. Yeah, absolutely. And having to separate your feelings to make business decisions based upon facts. That's something that's hard for people to do, especially me in my world, because I'm in such an intimate, um, like role behind my chair with my clients and then also with my team members and how to separate that has been difficult, but you have to, in order to operate at the level that we have. Right. And now to split this role that um, my partner's name is Lily Mm -hmm. to split this with her She has that softness about her too, as she's learning to navigate through how to be the stern leader she has to be, but then also extend this grace. And now I get to help her and coach her and guide her through that. And it's funny because she's 23 years old 
I'm significantly older than her, but it's, it's interesting because I see so much of me as an owner 17 years ago in her. And I was about 22 years old at that time. She's got the fire. She does. She does. She's got the fire yes. and like the energy and even like a, some patience. Like she's, yeah. to me, she seems like energetically a good yes. fit. Yes, yes. No, she definitely is. And that's the thing is like, I just felt like God put this on my heart to bring Lily in to create space and relief for me to do what he's called me to do. And the only way that I could do it would be aligned with the right person. And it was so clear to me that it was her. Mm -hmm. It wasn't even a question. And that is the only way this has been possible. Even like sharing power with my husband through ownership together, I could never do that at the level that I am right now with Lily. And that's been nice. Does her being a stylist have a little bit to do with that? Like even being a partner with your husband, he's not necessarily in the salon and like in it like you you guys are, you well, ladies the tr are. truth is I don't go to bed with Lily. Yeah. Like, going right. to and, bed and with your business partner. Of the same yes, point. it gets a little dicey, yeah. you know? Like when there's extra spice in my bedroom, I don't really <laughs> like it if it's tension between us right. because we're co-owners of a business. <laughs> not the kind of spice yes, it comes not in, what I'm in looking here. For. Totally. So for me, I do love that there is now that peace and calmness in my relationship too at home that there's never existed before because the truth is we always went to bed as business partners and it kind of removed him from that space. That's, that's really nice too. I mean, I think that's amazing. And I think that having that awareness is something that a good amount of people lack. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, we're family business, which I talk about a lot, but there's so much overlap that, I, you know, we don't necessarily see it as. I'm treating you like a business partner right mm -hmm. now, but we do call it out a lot when I'm treating my business partner like my dad, like, yeah. oh, Nate, you're treating me like your dad or yeah, exactly. whatever the case may be. Definitely. How has the transition been for your family? Has it been good? Oh, it's been wonderful. Yeah. Um, you know, the whole goal through all of this was to create space. Mm -hmm. And in the last six months, as you know, I've been working so hard at just being more disciplined in my time and more protective of that space and that energy, really. Mm -hmm. Like that could be just as draining as time, right? 100%. Is if something ex requires more energy from you than you have to give or want to give, you're more drained than even working a 12-hour day. And so um, in my home, it has brought, brought a peace and a calmness between us. And it's funny how you parent differently. Mm -hmm. You know, when, yep. when mom was rested, all of a sudden I have a like – the patience that I never once had, as my therapist called it, a tenderness about you, Brie. Oh, well, <laughs> like, you. Nobody in my life has ever called me tender. As right. my mom says, you're kind of a rough lover. Well, it's productive for me. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you. And one thing I can say, as a rough love, I, you're always safe with me. Mm -hmm. I just can't say that you're going to feel like this puppy kind of love. Right. It's me. not like a pillow squishy. No, it's <laughs> not. Exactly. And so I do, I feel like this type of tenderness that can exist there that I've never allowed before. It is really refreshing. And um, in my marriage too, Mark and I creating space for us in a way that we never have mm -hmm. and being really protective of that. And, um, in the public eye, we're very vocal about our highs and our lows. And mm -hmm. I mean, we've let, I mean, when stuff has hit the fan and I've just put it out there because the truth is I know that other female professionals, that is what they deal with. That yeah. is a constant struggle to create balance in your balance, technically mm -hmm. in your relationship, and then continue to scale as a business owner. You, you feel this like, um, almost compromise in power. If you show there's any sort of weakness that yep. might exist in you, not even in relation to business, but the truth is it's like a teeter totter. They go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. One bleeds into the other and vice versa. And it doesn't matter how much you try and filter it and protect that space. You just can't help it. It's true. Mm -hmm. It does bleed into one another. And so I believe my household is now experiencing this softness and level of me that they never have. And I like that about me, mm -hmm. although it's very unfamiliar and kind of eerie, yes. as I yes. said, you know, like walking through the mall that's completely empty and you're looking for the people. That's the feeling I have in my own body, in my own business and in my own home right now. It's just getting used to it. It's different. There's a lot of science to support that when it comes to people who have lived in high cortisol childhoods or, mm. or who mm -hmm. take on a lot at work, who are in high stress work situations they tend to create more things to do more and more and more yeah. so that they can stay in that heightened state. Yeah. So when that, when you decide, cause it has to be a decision, right? Mm -hmm. When you decide to bring that down, getting used to your new normal mm -hmm. is, 
it's really difficult. I something I struggle with. Totally. I mean, and we go through our ebbs yep. and flows. Some yep. days we're totally on the same page, and then some days it's like, I don't know, who are you? Yeah, You've lost right? your mind again. Totally. Um, how how is that working? Like you have three daughters. Mm-hmm. Um, was that integral in the decision to kind of shift the way that your life was functioning? Yeah, you know. I, as they get older, they get busier and you think they don't need you as much. But the truth is like, I run a very dramatic household. (laughs) Drama is like where we thrive. Okay. And sometimes it's fight or flight. And sometimes Mm -hmm. there's a sense of peace that comes with it. It's like, oh good. Everybody's ultra dramatic today. This is normal. But (laughs) well, at least that's a, you have a baseline there (laughs) at least. You're like, okay, cool. Exactly. So, um, for us, I just feel like, uh, there was a presence needed from me Mm -hmm. that I wasn't able to provide continuing to operate at the level that I was. And my mother-in-law is amazing. She's our full-time nanny Mm -hmm. and she runs the household. Really. We all work for her, but, um, she, there's just certain things that your kids, you want your mom. Mm -hmm. I'm 39 years old. When I don't feel good, I still want my mom. Same. And so I know that for them, that was becoming more and more obvious that, well, mom's not here. Like, I miss cheer tryouts. Oh, which killed me. And then they start to kind of act out in ways that you haven't really seen before. As a mom, you internalize it anyway. Well, and they're learning how to express themselves. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're 10, five, and almost two. So we're in really interesting age brackets to navigate through life and all our emotions and our feelings. And they're big ones, you know? Yes, they sure are. So there, there was a moment where Matea told me, my 10 year old, we laid in bed in October. I called you right after this. You know this. Um, we laid in bed in October and she says, mama, I just feel so bad. I need to tell you something. She starts crying. I'm like, Oh God, what? You're like, no, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> like it's too early for this. Okay. What? And she said, oh, I just, sometimes I pray I'm an only child. Mm-hmm. I said, Oh baby girl. girl, that's okay. Sometimes like it's hard to be a sister. I was a sister to a big sister and a little sister and a big brother. It's hard. It's a hard role. And she says, no, mama, it's because I remember when you were available. Mm. And she, she related that to when we didn't have Sayla, my second. Yeah. And when we didn't have Coda, my third. Because that's their frame of reference, right? That's what changed for them. At that mark in her life. Yeah. Yeah. She didn't realize that I was being called to work and drawn my attention there and away from our household Mm -hmm. at that time in her life, it was that she had to split attention with a second human. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's okay for your heart to feel that way. You're not wrong. And my eyes just welled up with tears. I looked at her and I'm like, what the hell am I doing? There is no dollar that Mm -hmm. is ever worth this feeling right now. And it just was a way like God just stopped me in my tracks. I feel like I've been using this reference a lot today alone. Just I had couples therapy before this, so I'm a little spicy. Yeah, I know. But I used this reference earlier was Mark and I were on this path, and it's amazing how you experience a disruption or interruption on your path Mm -hmm. for you to have an awakening. Mm -hmm. And most people miss the awakening. They don't learn the lesson through it. They just get right back into their routine and miss the whole reason why there was a detour there. But you should never waste a crisis. No. Never let a crisis go without taking something from it. Absolutely. Getting back into your comfortable discomfort is the worst thing we can do for ourselves. Yeah. And we watch people do it all the time because people want that comfort, that space that Mm -hmm. makes you feel like, okay, this is safe. Yeah. Well, you're, it's, um, oh, what is it? I, I just did a, like a mastermind kind of thing. And it was like, our body is more comfortable in a familiar hell than mm-hmm. an unfamiliar heaven. Yeah, absolutely. Kind of like this eerie feeling I'm feeling right, right now. It's yeah. like every part of me wants to run back and like, do hair four days a week. I need to make yeah. chaos. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. But so for me in my life on that path, that was the interruption that I allowed God to then intervene. Mm-hmm. And you have to be willing to accept that. Yep. On the path in your interruption is what do I have to take away from this? And how am I, go- how am I going to create different actions in my life to give me a different result. Cause where I was right then and there was not working where I was right then and there as a mother, as a wife, even as a business owner was no longer working. And so I had to make that decision. And like, 
October 24th I did. And like October 25th, I started calling clients. I said, this will be my last year in my chair. So um, that was like, I felt like a huge identity crisis for Mm -hmm. me and almost like crumbling for me. But then I came to realize that everything I placed my identity in was something that could be stripped away at any time. Right. And the truth is my identity can't be found in who I am as a business owner, who I am as Matea's mother or Mark's wife, but in who I am in Christ. And I have to fall back on that every time. And so in this eerie feeling that I'm having right now is the discovery of my identity and truly my faith. This like rebirth kind of thing. Exactly. When you and I transitioned right at kind of at the same, same time. time. I know. Um, so like it, it was, it was kind of, for me, from my perspective, it was kind of exciting to have, even if we weren't talking about it openly yeah. or, or with each other every day, it was kind of exciting and comforting to have yeah. somebody who was totally. kind of going through this like yeah. total identity crisis at the same time that I was going through a total yeah. identity crisis. Um, and I don't, what we call these things like identity crises. And I'm, I'm wondering if you feel this way. There is no like resolution to the crisis. You, it's a, it's like a total rebirth, rebuilding, re, like it takes a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm personally still in the midst of it. Yeah. I'm still trying to figure out exactly what that means. Yeah. Had, how did it work for you? Well, honestly, like it was just made so clear to me in that instance, this needed to happen. Mm-hmm. And then God said to me in March, I was writing in my journal. He said, make space so that I can give you more. Give me your salon and I'll give you 10 times more. You're like, no, I cannot do that. I said, <laughs> <laughs> there, but the phone's cutting yeah. out, God. Yeah. Uh, that's not what I Must wanted to bad, hear. Bad connection. Shh. 100%. <laughs> and I will never forget, I was in Dana Point in a class and you could just feel like this heaviness on the room. I just felt like, I was right where I needed to be because it creates a place of stillness. Mm -hmm. And in stillness, if there's a loud bang and there's nothing going on, you hear it so loud, Yeah, even if it wasn't very loud. But because of the environment, it was just this loud voice to me. And it was so clear. Give me your salon so that I can give you 10 times more. And as I was there in this journaling session and meditation, I, my phone was going off like crazy. And I'm like, what? is going on. It's a salon. Like somebody better be dying because Mm -hmm. they all know where I am and I'm unavailable. So I walk outside, I answer the phone and state boards in my salon. And, um, I wasn't surprised. I've been stirring some, um, just ruffling some feathers in the industry. Mm -hmm. So when that happens, you know, people can't help themselves. So I was halfway expecting this, but when this is all going on, I'm like, okay, I'm dealing with this outside. My manager's home dealing with it. My sister's there in the salon trying to handle things. And I just decided, you know what? You guys deal with it. Let me know how it ends up. And I start to walk back inside. And I just felt like God just say, like, are we done yet? So clear. So loud. In a place of just calmness and quiet. Boom. Are we done yet? And like a stern voice. Like, you know, when your dad talks to you sternly. Like, my dad doesn't ever yell at me. But if he were to, I'd be like, yo, what is going on here? Exactly. And that's exactly how I felt. I was like, oh my God, yeah, we're done here. I'm done doing this, playing this tug of war of trying to serve two masters, continuing to find my value and my identity in who I am over here and ignoring this over here, which when I adopt that and I embrace that identity, that's when everything in my life will change Mm -hmm. because then I'm stepping into truly what I believe is my calling and that's to lead these women from a place that I once lived, the pain that I've experienced through my journey, my experiences is how I will lead people because now I have that to relate to them in. Like never could I understand why going through something like a miscarriage, for Mm -hmm. instance, you were there for that. I almost died. I thought this was going to take my life. It just felt like a piece of my soul was taken, ripped out of my heart, like just really. And I didn't understand it then, but now I see it so clearly now from the angle in which I'm called to lead women Mm -hmm. are from these moments of pain that I've experienced in my life. And like, that's the truth for everyone. Mm -hmm. We all have a story to tell. We all have a testimony of some sort. And there isn't one point in your life, like you said, a crisis that there wasn't something to learn from it and grow from it. It's if you choose to recognize it and accept it, are you going to really be able to value those moments? Mm -hmm. I never thought I would see light 
and like glory to God through a miscarriage. Never did I ever. Because you don't, I mean, you don't naturally connect those two things. No. Right? You don't connect something positive with something so tragic and negative. No. And to be perfectly Maybe honest, the right word, but I tragic. went, no, it's true. I went through like a year of therapy to get through that. I'm like, God, yo, what you doing up there? I'm not yeah. sure if you're paying attention down here, but I need you to do this, this, and this. And quickly I realized it wasn't about me. Yeah. Everything like about. God makes plans. Or something totally. of that nature. Yeah. Totally. Surrender yourself to him and you can make it less about you and more about what you can learn from it and help others. So what I'm hearing is that you, you have put a lot of work into, and maybe this is something that comes super naturally to you, but you have also put a lot of work into being sure that you're open to these suggestions. Um, and that has helped propel you through this, these decisions. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to other women who are kind of struggling? They, they know they're uncomfortable, they're not quite sure what's wrong. Mm-hmm. They would like to be open mm-hmm. to the interpretation or open to, to the understanding. What advice would you give to them? Um, well, I think the truth is in all of that is they do know what's wrong. They can't be honest with themselves. Mm-hmm. Anything and everything has to start on a foundation of truth. Mm-hmm. And if we do not have that, you cannot build anything stable on sand. 100% agree. So looking yourself in the mirror and deciding what's working for your life and what is not working and being completely vulnerable and honest, you don't even have to write it down. Just tell yourself that. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to say it out loud. Be honest with yourself. I look in the mirror and say, Bree, what is not working is you not being present in your daughter's life. What is not working is living with a stranger, feeling Mm -hmm. so much disconnection in my marriage and feeling like I was showing up every day for him out of obligation. Mm -hmm because we had this legal document and we, we had this picture perfect life on Instagram, your, how the business would crumble if we were really honest about how we go to bed at night. Your highlight with squares. strangers. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. And so once I got honest with myself, I could then decide where do I want to go? Honesty creates the point A on the map. Mm-hmm. If you can't be honest with your point A, you're starting from a false start line. hundred percent. You, you, it's like, what it makes me think of what pops into my head is like you're standing on a surfboard on water. Mm-hmm. But if you don't have anything to hold you up, you're falling in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So honesty is everything. First start there. And when you can get a point A on the map, you can go anywhere. But we can't go anywhere without that. And most of the time people want to focus on point B, but we can't mm-hmm. even address point B until you figure out A. So my advice is get honest with yourself. I think that's fantastic advice. Mm -hmm. What do you do when everything is kind of intense and you're tired and you need to recharge? Mm, Recharge. Um, You know, it's funny on this journey in the mission field, if you will, there isn't really a time ever where you let your guard down Mm -hmm. because you're constantly in battle. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, if you believe in God, you have to believe in Satan. And when you're doing works for the kingdom, that's when you're attacked the most. Mm -hmm. So my guard's never down. And recharging is just being completely confident and certain and knowing I am who I say I am. And looking in the mirror in integrity. Mm -hmm. And just take a deep breath and say, I can do this because I was called to do this. It's a different mindset than most people want to adopt. And you have to choose it every day. And just like you choose that every day, I choose to rejoice. What are things to be glad in? Mm -hmm. Because that's the definition of rejoice. Not happy. Not things of the flesh that make you happy for a temporary time. But what do I have in my life to rejoice in? Mm -hmm. I think that's really a good way to look at it. Like, Mm -hmm. What what is it that I already have that Mm -hmm. makes my soul lift up a little bit? Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Recharging for me, though, is to have that quality with my husband and with my kids and just to know that we are living the way that we choose, Mm -hmm. not forced, but choose. Um, And it's so funny because the things before that I used to find like value in is like traveling, taking these extensive, like crazy vacations. And the truth is sitting on the edge of our pool, sharing a bowl of cherries and laughing is just as joyful for me Mm -hmm. as flying across the country first class and 
let's be honest, that is stressful. When you it have is three stressful. kids traveling, I'm like, oh my gosh, can we use a tranquilizer, please? I was just thinking it's uh, so much more peaceful when you're just in your own, yes. in your own oasis. Like even if it's not your pool, your backyard, mm-hmm. wherever you are, when you have that, when it's chill, like we order yeah. pizza and eat on the front lawn sometimes. Sorry to yeah. my neighbors. It's fine. But it's, it's great. so much, the kids yep. are more at peace. Mm-hmm. My husband's more at peace. Everyone's yeah. just more chill. Totally. One of the greatest things we do is just carve out space to chase butterflies. Oh, Sounds okay. silly, but our backyard is beautiful. These kids don't care what we do back there. Just chase butterflies. I think we lose that, right? I think we get caught up at our, at the point in our development that we think it's stuff, it's things, it's the house, it's the pool, it's the mm-hmm. vacation, it's whatever. But what the kids really want is the time. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, I, absolutely. I have a girlfriend coming and she says, what do you want me to bring for the kids? And I said, absolutely nothing. Yeah. They Not only do they not need anything, they don't even want anything. They just want you. If you go yeah. swimming with them, you, you want, you nailed it. Yes, That's exactly. It. They don't it's need so it. They don't want anything else. Yep. And we, we project so much onto our kids that it's, it's hard to see that sometimes. Yeah. I mean, I catch myself all the time. And I'm like, you know, that's not even what's really important to you. Yep. Totally. Have yeah. you had any mentors along the way that have really modeled this for you and that you've seen it work or, I mean, cause I'm assuming on the hair, doing hair, being behind the chair that you've had mentors in that realm, mm-hmm. but on this like pivot on this change, mm-hmm. have you had anybody who's been integral and in oh yeah, supporting? I, I pay to be within proximity of people that are going to make me go. Mm-hmm. And that's the type of leader and coach that I am. The mm-hmm. words that I speak aren't to create any sort of motivation or inspiration. I want to create movement and impact. Mm-hmm. That's how I run my coaching program. That's why it is transformative because inspiration and motivation just gets you to feel good. Yeah. Kind of like a little fuzzy. Maybe I'll, I'll run my Monday differently. Mm-hmm. But when we create impact and movement, people transform. Yes. And... I pay to be within proximity around people who do the same for me. Um, I have a coaching program that I'm in, Wake Up Warrior. Mm -hmm. And um, it was actually a men's like male focused program. And they've just introduced the female side of it. And I'm so excited that I get to lead Warrior Women. So that just was presented to me and really takes off this month. So I'm so excited for that. Um, But my coach there, his name is Garrett White. Um, he's very aggressive. He kind of has my similar personality and he challenges me. I would call you assertive. Oh, thank you. I appreciate (laughs) that. I will take that and accept that. Um, but he challenges me. He forces me into a position Mm -hmm. to do not what's comfortable, what's required. And I think that's a lot of times what people miss is sometimes they don't want to do what's required and want Mm -hmm. to stay comfortable. And he forces me out of my comfort zone to do that. Um, I had a great mentor, Candace Motley. She's an amazing human being in the hair world, but also um, has just really helped me to sort through things of where am I at and where do I want to go and um, just gave me permission. You know, this is funny, like you could come to me and ask me for advice, but really like you might need somebody that may be like within your world Mm -hmm. that can relate to you at a different space than I can. 100%. And having that permission from Candace. I flew across the country, Raleigh, North Carolina. I invested $15,000 to be in her proximity for 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And it was worth every single penny because what I went there for, I was so intentional about, and I vocalized that, Mm -hmm. said, this is what I need from you. And I don't want to leave here and not have that. Mm -hmm. And we walked through the whole process. She has whiteboards that cover the whole back wall of her studio. And we whiteboard the heck out of my life. I'm like, man, I'm really jacked up. It's Mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. Let's sort through, sift through the muck to find the gold. And that she did for me. She gave me the permission to go. I made a huge pivot in my life and in my career. It made me 10 times more money. But it was hard. And in relation to the gold, you have now launched, I mean, you and Mark have a podcast together. Yes, we do. And then you just launched a solo podcast. Yeah. Yes. Um, this is more of a faith-based podcast. It's called Call Out the Gold. Short and sweet little episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, I just find that we as women are so freaking hard on ourselves. We live in a world that is so competitive. I'm in the in the beauty industry, right? We're just yeah. full of catty, can you say B words on you here? You can say whatever Yeah. You want. Catty little biatches. <laughs> And it's not freaking necessary. It isn't. So what I am doing is I'm creating this community of women who want to collaborate with one another, build each other, and call out the gold in each and every one of us because that's something that's worth celebrating. Mm -hmm. And we forget to freaking celebrate each other. 
Like we make babies for God's sake. Like, like we we're kind of superhumans. Yeah. So that's something to be recognized. And as much as I love the male space too, like my hubby all hunky and getting all muscular on me in that, I love that space for him too. But there's something that I do that only I can do as mm -hmm. the woman in my house and the woman in business and mm -hmm. the woman that leads other women. A hundred percent exciting to celebrate. So call out the gold is meant to be that safe space, just depositing just little flecks of gold in everybody's life as I feel God puts on my heart. So it's, that. yeah, it's just um, something that was prophesied over me in uh, my salon chair, actually. And a client just made it so clear to me, like this is meant to happen. And then it's funny how God just aligns it and confirms it and it's all just happening. So it's great. That is yeah. wonderful. Yeah, so thank you. I'm excited to listen. I, full disclosure, haven't listened yet. I listened to the very first like intro and then totally I haven't gone back. fine, yes. Um, but I think that that's so important because we are hard on ourselves. We don't, mm -hmm. we, it's so much easier to criticize ourselves and go for the next thing that's going to make us feel better. Yeah. As opposed to hearing what other people value in us or pointing out the things that we value in ourselves. Yes, absolutely. Um, I had a question that was pending in my mind Ooh. and it just took a left turn and walked off. So I'm, I'm not it. really sure how that okay. happened. Yeah. Um, but I will say I'm so grateful for you being here and oh, for sharing you. your journey. I think that, as you said, women specifically have something that we can offer to everything that is a little bit different. Um, and I guess, oh, well, here, here comes the question back. How does that play out in your salon? So you and Mark are partners mm -hmm. and just having his perspective on the salon. Do you feel like that helps you offer a different experience than maybe somebody who owns a salon by themselves or does something kind of in a vacuum mm. to have that, to have both people contributing? Yeah. Um, honestly, it created more conflict and disconnect in our marriage than it did anything that was mm -hmm. like productive in business. Um, I think because I didn't know then what I know now, mm -hmm. you know, I had to go through that to figure yep. out where I am right now. And um, if I could do it differently, I would have um, just to save in the like sense of the tension we lived mm -hmm. with for so long. Um, it's heavy. It is heavy. And I don't believe anybody deserves to live life like that. And had I known that would be where it led us for all these years. I would have definitely handled it differently. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, his uh, he operates in business based on facts and he doesn't have much empathy. And I know that in a man's world, sometimes it's just, I think, the nature of a man. That's what they're but, taught. Yes, too. totally. That's very much what they're taught. Totally. He talks to the girls like a coach. I'm like, all right, so those people actually pay us. So yeah, that's not like, how we're going to do is this. This painful, yeah. so Totally, stop. totally. You can't just tell them to F off and run to the fence <laughs> and back. It doesn't work that way. So for us, really, I just had to create healthy boundaries there. And he's been suspended multiple times from the business because it's just not needed here. Yeah. Yep. So you lost your privilege. It's just that simple. So it's either that or get divorced. So yeah. we just have to create boundaries there. 100%. I want to stay married so then you don't get to be here. And that he was fine with. He actually would prefer that. In 2020, I asked him to take a big step away and brought my sister in to help me with mm -hmm. some things. And um, that was so hard on us yeah. at first, but then offered us so much great relief that we did not know we needed until we were in it. You know, it's like an uncoupling of sorts. And you, yeah. what you're trying to do is not uncouple, yes. but you have to uncouple here in order to connect over here. Totally, totally. And it was so much better to connect over here than stay with that friction there. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you, like the scripture says, iron sharpens iron and mm -hmm. iron will not sharpen iron without the friction between the two. And that is every effort we have made in our marriage. So I embrace the lows as much as I embrace the highs because I am so committed to the growth that happens from the friction mm -hmm. and the sharpening that happens between the friction. And it has to be something that you are. So, that's where the true commitment comes in is not committed on the days that it's butterflies and rainbows, mm -hmm. but it's committed on the days where there's friction, all hell's breaking loose, you know, and it's usually on travel days. Travel days never start off good in the gentry household. Not Packing the car is not something either. that goes well for us. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. But once we're there, it's yes. usually pretty good right. after everybody's taken their time out and yes. sat in their corner. Totally. Give me a glass of wine. But yeah, no, for us, 
really the true commitment came into play when we decided, okay, we have to be just as committed in the friction as we are in Mm -hmm. the highs. And um, people don't talk about that. Mm -mm. Instagram doesn't talk about that. They don't show you Mm -hmm. the commitment in the lows. And when you just said that, it, it, I felt some sort of way about it because you, it's a choice, right? You can figure it, you can go away and try to find something that feels good or you can put the effort, the grass is greener where you water it. You can put the effort in here with the connection you already have. Yep. Totally. Yeah. And that's where we were at for a long time in our marriage was just trying to focus on when it was good and then numb out, be quiet, create distance when it was bad and, um, creating friction and colliding as we call it in our house forces Mm -hmm. you to grow. And I embrace that time just as much as I do the highs. And we do that in front of our kids and people might disagree with this, but I want to teach them to have a voice and to not waver Mm -hmm. because of the comfort of other people. And also be able to communicate and work through things where you disagree. And sometimes mommy and daddy can agree to disagree and still love you and love each other just as much today as we did yesterday. And to teach them what that's like is so different than what the world teaches you is kind of be quiet and don't ruffle any Mm -hmm. feathers. And just because this person's feeling is different than you doesn't mean that you have to voice your opinion. Well, if you're going to ask me my opinion, I'm never going to tell you what you want to hear. You're going to hear my opinion. A hundred percent. And that I'm raising my daughters to do. So you're modeling it for them. Absolutely. Also, you're not just teaching them or telling them you are modeling it for them. Absolutely. And I ask they're them, not a do what you say. They're do yeah, what they see. Totally. And I ask them their opinions. Let's talk about this. Mark and I are entertaining the idea to sell everything and move across the world. Right. Of course, I want to go to like Barcelona or something right. that just sounds sexy. And he's like, Tennessee, yeah. maybe? I know. <laughs> You're he's like, like no. uh, Florida. Yeah, <laughs> which is fine. And, you know, I love Florida, too. But, I mean, we're just talking about what that would be like for us and yeah. our family and just getting the in- input from our kids. And Sayla's like, I want to go on an airplane. Okay, perfect. Great reason to move. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Matea is like, like, well, we would be going in a truck. So. Uh-huh, exactly. Matea's like, I don't understand. Why would I leave cheer? You know, the things that they value in their 10 year old life and their five year old life. Mm -hmm. And I want them to have opinions and I want to consider them and I want to talk about them so they feel confident and comfortable doing that. Because then they won't settle for anything else. Sorry to cut you off. No, 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 no. It's so true. It's so true. That's what I want. It was funny. The principal texts me about Matea and just she has this servant's heart. And I love that about Mm -hmm. her because that is me. I love to serve others. As Mm -hmm. you know, being a Mm -hmm. client of mine for 15 years, whatever it's been. I, it hasn't been that long, but it's been a minute. So anyways, but as I am raising her, I keep telling her, you can be anything you want to be. You can do anything you want to do and you have to have the right heart while you do it. Otherwise it doesn't matter. And so she said something the other day about, you know, mom, I want to be president. I said, okay, what are you going to do if that doesn't work out? And she looks at me and she's like, why wouldn't it work out? I said, exactly. That was the response I wanted. Yes. (laughs) Right? My work here is done. I'll be having a glass of wine by the pool. Uh Yeah, I did it. We made it. No, but really it's just, I feel like like your kids are such a great walking testimony of how you live. So if your kid's a little shit, you better. I was like, well, that's yourself. the case. We saw my kids this morning. I got to get my no, shit together. Dominance is good. It's healthy and productive. I always remind myself that my dominance has been productive in my life. When it's negative, it's because I'm not being assertive mm-hmm. and paying attention. Right. Yeah. So it's good. Thank you so much for sharing. Oh. I appreciate your transparency and your openness and I love all the little pieces of advice oh. that you've kind of left along the way. I would encourage whoever is listening, watching to listen to it twice. I think there's so many good little nuggets and I'm super grateful for you. Oh, well, thank you so much for having me. It was such an honor. When you asked me, I'm like, yes, okay. Hair has to be on point. Shoot, pressure's on. No, I love it. The hair is perfect. You You are perfect. thank Thank you for being here. Of course. Thank you. A huge thank you to our incredible guests for sharing their stories, wisdom, and breaking down barriers with us. If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to subscribe and leave a review. Your support means the world to me and helps spread the word about the amazing women paving the road less traveled in male-dominated industries. If you have suggestions for a future guest or topic you'd like me to explore, please reach out on social media. I'd love to hear from you. Follow me on your favorite social platform for updates and behind the scenes. Keep pushing boundaries, challenging norms, and lifting each other up.